Wazapo and welcome to this video. I'm Sangya Chuten, studying in Kanku Middle Secondary School in the 9th grade. Today I'd like to present an exciting history topic to you all, and it's about 13 arts and crafts of Bhutan. Firstly, to talk about Lhazo, it is an art of painting which represents the portrayal of the interaction of human beings with nature and it often symbolizes the spirituality, the significance of Buddhism, happiness and all the things that proudly represent Buddhist identity. The painters are usually known as Lharibs and they paint on canvases, walls, frescoes, wood, paper, stone and flags. Number 2. Jimzo or Sculpture Buddhists are famous for the intricacy of their clay sculpture representing deities and religious figures like Buddha, Guru Rinpoche, Jyotung, and other Buddhist imagery. Sculpting in a clay is more of a male craft which is found in temples, monasteries, and songs. Number 3. Shingzo or Wood Carving Shingzo or carpentry plays a major part in the construction of Bhutan's majestic fortresses or songs, temples, houses, palaces and bridges. The carpenters experienced in this field known as Dochen excel in creating true masterpieces of woodcrafts. The example of a woodcraft or structure is the Punakha Zong which is beautifully decorated. Number 4. Pazo or Carving It includes slate carving, stone carving as well as the most popular wood carving. Due to Bhutan's rich collection of trees, there is a variety of wood available in the country. The carvers usually carve out deities, mantras and other relevant cultural imagery into wooden marks used in the tattoo or festival and used in the doors and windows of rural Bhutanese houses. Number 5. Dezo or paper making. The traditional paper is made from the bark of the defined tree and was widely used in the past. The master paper makers are called Dezob. Most religious scriptures and texts were written on the Dezo using traditional Buddhist ink or occasionally in gold. Number 6. Dozo or Masonry Dozo is the ancient craft of masonry, a trade which is still practiced today. Carpenters and masons together use their skills and build stones, walls, stupas, buildings, houses, bridges, courtyards, and temples out of stone. One of the best examples of stone structure is the Chorten Kora in Chashiangsi. Number 7. Shakso. The art of wood turning is known as Shakso and it is traditionally practiced by the people of Chashiangsi in Eastern Bhutan. The master craftsmen of this vibrant art are known as Shakzopa. They are famed for the wooden cups and balls, also known as tapas and poles. Number 8. Thakzo or weaving. Made out of cotton, silk, and wool, textile weaving or thakzo is an old Buddhist tradition exclusively done by rural women for earning income. Different patterns and colors combination are used with each weave having a particular symbolism, the most spectacular one being Kishutara. Number 9. Temzo or Embroidery Temzo or the art of tailoring is a popular art among the Buddhists. This art can be broadly classified as Temdrup, the art of embroidery, Temdrup, the art of applique, and Tsolham, the art of traditional Buddhist boot making. The art of embroidery and applique are normally practiced by monks. Using this art, they produce large religious scrolls known as tankas that depicts gods and goddesses, deities and saints. Today, girls are taught embroidery in the National Institute of Sorukchusum in Tempo. Number 10. Luxo. The art of bronze casting called Luxo is commonly used to cast containers such as cups, urns, and vases. People also shaped bronze into weapons and armors such as battle axes, helmets, knives, swords, and shields. Bronze casting in Bhutan was introduced only in the 17th century. Number 11. Tarzo or cane weaving. Most of the forests in Bhutan are richly stocked with bamboos and canes of various species. Taking advantage of these abundant natural resources, the Buddhist people have mastered the skill of weaving cane and bamboo products widely known as tarzo. This art is spread throughout the country and products such as baskets, winnowers, mats, containers like pangchungs are all made. Number 12. Tarzo. 
The art of ironwork is known as garza and blacksmithing in Bhutan began sometime in the 14th century. It is believed that it was introduced by a Tibetan saint known as Jiptop Tangtong Gyalpo. He is revered by the Buddhist people as a master engineer for his skill in casting iron chains and erecting them as bridges over gorges. The master engineer built the iconic suspension bridge over Paro Chu, visible on your way from Paro to Tempo, and linking the highway to the famous Tachok Thakang. It is one of the eight suspension bridges in Bhutan. Today, blacksmith not only built bridges but also agricultural tools, chains, knives, swords, daggers, and armor. Finally, number 13, Trico. The vibrant craft of traditional ornament making is still designed today known as Trico. Its products are widely used by the Putnis women. A master craftsman skilled in shaping beautiful ornament is regarded as Trico Lopin. Using precious stones and metals such as corals, turquoise, silver and gold, these master craftsmen create all manner of ornaments and implements including necklaces, bangles, earrings, rings, brooches, amulets to contain ritual objects, and traditional container to carry the much chewed bitter nut. These 13 arts and crafts are an essential part of Bhutan's cultural heritage, which was formally categorized during the reign of Gelsi Tenzin Rapke, the fourth Duktesi of Bhutan starting from 1680 till 1694. I hope you enjoyed my video. Thanks for watching it and do subscribe it.